We all know that prices went up during the pandemic when the supply chains shut down and failed. But our supply chains have now improved. And prices are still too high. A, lo a loaf of bread cost 50% more today than it did before the pandemic. Ground beef is up almost 50%. Many of the big food companies are seeing their highest profits in two decades. And while many grocery chains pass along these savings, others still aren't. Look, I know most businesses are creating jobs, contributing to our economy, and playing by the rules. But some are not. And that's just not right. And we need to take action when that is the case. At As Attorney General in California, I went after companies that illegally increased prices, including wholesalers that inflated the price of prescription medication, and companies that conspired with competitors to keep prices of electronics high. I won more than $1 billion for consumers. So believe me, as president, I will go after the bad actors. And I will work to pass the first ever federal ban on price gauging on food. My plan will include new penalties for opportunistic companies that exploit crises and break the rules, and we will support smaller food businesses that are trying to play by the rules and get ahead. We will help the food industry become more competitive because I believe competition is the lifeblood of our economy. More competition means lower prices for you and your families. Now compare what Donald Trump plans to do. He wants to impose what is, in effect, a national sales tax on everyday products and basic necessities that we import from other countries. That will devastate Americans. It will mean higher prices on just about every one of your daily needs. A Trump tax on gas a Trump tax on food, a Trump tax on clothing, a Trump tax on over-the-counter medication. And you know, economists have done the math. Donald Trump's plan would cost a typical family $3,900 a year. At this moment, when everyday prices are too high, he will make them even higher. As president, I'll tack and take on the issue of the cost of health care. As attorney general, I took on insurance companies and big pharma and got them to lower their prices. And together with President Biden, we've gone even further. We capped the price of insulin at $35 a month and the total cost... of prescription drugs at $2,000 a year for seniors. We let Medicare negotiate lower drug prices for seniors. And just yesterday, and just yesterday, we announced that we are lowering the price by up to 80% for 10 more life-saving drugs.
And I pledge to continue this progress. I'll lower the cost of insulin and prescription drugs for everyone with your support, not only our seniors. And demand transparency from the middlemen who operate between Big Pharma and the insurance companies who use opaque practices to raise your drug prices and profit off your need for medicine. Two months ago, I announced that medical debt will no longer be used against your credit score. And I will work as president with states like here in North Carolina, Roy Cooper, thank you again, to cancel medical debt for more and more, millions more Americans. As for Donald Trump, well, he wants to repeal the Affordable Care Act, which 45 million Americans rely on, 45 million Americans rely on it for health care. That would take us back to a time when insurance companies could deny people with pre-existing conditions. We all remember what that was. <laughs> and we're not going back. We're not going back. We're not going back. And, and remember, and this is why we're not going back, because we do remember, he tried to cut Medicare every year he was president, threatening a program that tens of millions of seniors count on. And according to his Project 2025 agenda, he intends to undo our work to bring down prescription drugs, the cost of prescription drugs, and insulin costs. Well, we've come too far to let that happen. <laughs> so we're not going back on that, and let's talk about the cost of housing. So now, the housing market can be complicated, but look, I'm not new to this issue. As state attorney general, I drafted and helped pass a homeowner bill of rights, one of the first in America. And during the foreclosure crisis, I took on the big banks for predatory lending with many of my colleagues, including Roy Cooper, and won $20 billion for California families when I was attorney general. So I know how to fight for people who are being exploited in the housing market. And I know what home ownership means. It's more than a financial transaction. It's so much more than that. It's more than a house. Home ownership and what that means, it's a symbol of the pride